Yo, what's up, realized men? This is Philip. Hope you guys are having a great day. Probably not the face you're expecting, but I'm just filling in for Isaac for a day today, and I'm doing a bit of a video on his channel. So uh, let's get started. Hope you enjoy. Sit back, relax. And today we are talking about diets and what the best nutritional lifestyle is. So let's go. What's the best diet? This is probably one of the most difficult questions to answer because it's, it's so complex and there are so many factors that entail uh, deciding and stating what the best diet is, right? Uh, obesity is a huge problem in our world, right? And, and hence, there's a billion, if not trillion dollar industry in our world revolving around solving this problem, marketing different diets to people, you know, paleo, uh, ketogenic, vegetarian, vegan. So it's so hard to decide which one to choose. Which one should you choose out of so many and what's the best one to do? The factors involved aren't only biological. It's true that there are going to be certain diets like low carb diets, for example, paleo or ketogenic, that are really going to help people lose body fat where they're in a low percentage or to get through plateaus. And, and sometimes people are more sensitive to carbohydrates, so it, it can suit them better. But at the end of the day, there are so many factors involved, such as ethical factors. So you can't suggest a ketogenic diet to someone who's a vegetarian, right? Because they don't want to kill animals. So there is no best diet. What you have to understand is that if you're getting your food from nature and the majority of your food, 80 to 90% is just coming from whole foods. Uh, let's take someone who is an omnivore, right? They're not vegetarian. They eat everything. So if they're getting their food from fruits, vegetables, nuts, lean cuts of meat, it's pretty difficult to become obese on that type of diet. Why? Because when you're including so many vegetables and fruit, there's such a high fiber content, there's so much water that it naturally fills you up with minimal calories. So it's extremely hard to overeat when you're eating from nature. So some say count your calories and I agree. It's good to count your calories if, if you're new to dieting and you want to improve your body or you want to get to a really lean body fat. But if you're just an average person and you want to live a healthy life, the most important thing is just, you know, eat healthy food, eat food that's from nature, see how it affects your body, see what types of foods affect yourself in what way, whether you're sensitive to carbs and then adjust from there. But your baseline should be fundamental natural foods. So that's it. Cause I'm really sick of uh, people just marketing different types of diets. Now I'm not saying that isn't merits to, to diets like keto or paleo or, or vegetarianism. But the thing is, as long as you're getting your food from nature and the majority of your food is coming from whole based sources, you're going to be fine. That's all that matters. It's almost ironic that um, we're getting obese and unhealthy now as a society because, you know, we understand how health works now and with that came an unhealthy society. So it's almost like ignorance is bliss, right? In the past, there, were no, uh, there weren't that many sweets, right? You couldn't go down to the store and get a donut. Usually you either kill an animal or you eat an apple off a tree, right? So it's much more simple. We don't really know the mechanisms behind health and how to manipulate food to make it taste better and, and sell more products. And it all comes down to money, right? So you have to understand that if you want to be healthy, yes, you can do, if it fits your macros, you can count your calories and eat some crappy food from time to time. And that can be great for being flexible with your diet. But as long as you're getting the majority of your food from natural sources, it's not really that important which diet you're following, at least not you know, in the beginner or intermediate stage stages. Once you're starting to plateau or you're really trying to take your health and your fitness to extremes and you're, and you're trying to really experiment with your body, that's when you can um, adopt things like ketogenic diets or paleo, vegetarian, if it, it, it meshes with your ethics and morals or whatever other variables. Just make sure to eat from nature. Um, don't eat too many processed foods. Work hard, give it time, give it consistency, and that's all you need. That's it. It's simple, but uh, our world seems to complicate an issue that's much more simple, much more complex, sorry, than it needs to be. You know, think about it this way. Like, instead of worrying about whether I should change my protein to carbohydrate ratio, you know, swapping it from 10% to 20% to or something like that, Focus on not eating that chocolate bar next time you see it and including that in your carbohydrates. That's going to make a world of a difference compared to altering and manipulating your uh, macronutrients ratio, right? If you haven't mastered the, the art of self-control and, and you, you don't have the ability yet to 
to eat mostly from natural food, then, you know, diet plans and different types of diet strategies aren't in your arsenal yet, right? The fundamentals should always be mastered first. And then it's kind of like exercise and supplements, right? So think of exercise as a healthy, uh, natural-based diet. And supplements are the different types of diets, right? It's a supplement, right? That's how I see it at least, and that's what I found has worked best for the clients I train as a personal trainer. Let me know what you think. Maybe you completely disagree, but um, yeah, let me know why. Subscribe to my channel. I'm sure Isaac will put a link in the description. And that's about it from me. Uh, yeah.